My dear brothers and sisters, we are, all of us, looking inwardly during the season of Lent to remove the strains, the wrinkles, the wounds, the injuries that were caused during this year, not only from my own self, but from each other. We are removing all these wounds, the stains, the wrinkles, so that during this season, doing these good works, we may experience that we are made anew. And true indeed, every mystical body of Christ is growing within. The entire mystical body of Christ is growing within. What is it growing? It is growing to give birth to a more attractive Catholic. So, the Lord is groaning within himself that each one of us during this season will go through it gracefully and we will be born as attractive Catholics. Quite an attractive Catholics because we will go through a kind of experience during this Lent. That is why I always call this as a keyhole experience. You know, keyhole. Through the keyhole we see. And when we see them through the keyhole, we, even though it is a small keyhole, what is happening inside the door through the keyhole, we completely come to know. And today's transfiguration is an experience of that keyhole. Just like how Peter, James and John, why was Peter, James and John among the twelve chosen? Peter maybe because he said, I'll upon you, I will build my church. Maybe James because he would be the first to be martyred after Jesus' death. And John because was a beloved apostle. So these three were very favorites for Jesus. And for Jesus to give them a keyhole experience, he takes them up the mountain, there he prays and there he is transfigured. Therefore, my dear friends, smile all through your journey. Smile because we have to live believing that there are more than 500 references of joy in the scriptures for us, personally. We are not here caught up with a kind of a feeling, what will happen? No. There is joy in the gospel, there is joy in the scripture and therefore, live and smile that there are various references for each one of you to be joyful. Jesus' transfiguration we see is also a joyful moment. But what is going to happen before that, the disciples also have that behind their mind. Therefore, Jesus in a way transfigured himself to show that he would be showing his real glory. And Peter, James and John experienced that glory. But remember, it is not just because he wanted to show his glory and dominate his part in the lives of his apostles. No. I want to show myself and my riches and my wealth so that I dominate you. No. Jesus did not dominate by his transfiguration. Rather, he shows that he wants to motivate us. So by his transfiguration, I am motivated. Why can't I change? Why can't I become better? Another aspect about Jesus' transfiguration, transfiguration is not to condemn you, useless fellows, useless people. No, he never condemns you, but he wants to forgive you. Through his transfiguration, he wants to forgive you. Therefore, we have a wonderful God, even though I commit the grievous sin, he is there not to condemn me, but to forgive. Another aspect that we see, and because of his transfiguration, he doesn't want to oppress you and press you there and say, you are not fit for the transfiguration in your life. You are not fit to be in the kingdom of God. No, he doesn't do that. Rather, he sets us free by this transfiguration. He wants you to be free in living your spiritual life. Don't think there is something oppressed upon you, pressed upon you for your spiritual life. No. 
Jesus' transfiguration makes you and sets you free to live a wonderful spiritual life. The last aspect that we see is that he not compels you to do this. He gives you the freedom. He doesn't compel you to do this. But rather, through this transfiguration, he teaches you. He is a teacher. Therefore, we see very clearly this transfiguration has motivated me, has forgiven all my sins, has set me free, and thereby I am able to learn from this that I also can be transfigured. That is the beauty of it. Do not dwell on this transfiguration too much, my dear friends, throughout this day. Do not dwell on the transfiguration. Wow, beautiful. Jesus went up the mountain, daily transfigured, wonderful. No, don't dwell on that. But rather, continue or perhaps begin to work on your own transfiguration. You must be already in the mood of being transformed into a better person. Or if not, start now to get into the transformed nature which Jesus Christ promises. And that is why I like to tell you about what Father Anthony de Mello says. He says, in the beginning of my age as a young boy, I would always say, Lord, give me the grace to change the world. Because he was seeing so much of terrible things happening. And he was praying, Lord, give me the grace to change the whole world. But as he grew in his middle age, the prayer changed. And he started praying, Lord, give me the grace to change all those who come in contact with me. This was his prayer and during his middle age. But when he became old and elderly, that prayer also changed. And he prayed, Lord, give me the grace to change myself. Therefore, you and I should see that am I able to change? Because he is the one who is the author of my life, who is the potter, I am the clay, therefore he can change me. And that is the reason why my prayer from today will be, Lord give me the grace to change my life. And then I can see your life also being changed. Because you, I have changed, there is always a possibility that you will also change because from today my prayer is and your prayer is, Lord, give me the grace to change myself. That is why, my dear friend, we come to the point where Jesus says to Peter, Shall let's go down the mountain. Because Peter said, it's so good to be here. It's so nice. It's so wonderful. But Jesus says to him, let's go down. Let's go down to live our lives. And that is why when they were coming down the mountain, Peter, James and John realized three important things in their life. That is the heavenly clothing, the heavenly clothing that Jesus had to show the glory of his and the glory of the Father through Jesus Christ. The second aspect that they came to know is the heavenly visitors. The heavenly visitors was Moses and Elijah. Moses, who is the law, who was given the law. Elijah, who is the prophet, the best prophet. And if these two are there with Jesus on the mountain, then we know that Jesus was in a good company. And then the third aspect is the heavenly voice. The heavenly voice is the call to see whether Peter, James and John are serious about their call, leaving their boats coming to become apostles. This is the same for each and every one of us, my dear friends, that if Jesus showed his glory, you and I will also see his glory one day. If Jesus had his own company of Elijah and Moses, we also will have the company of all the angels and saints with us. And the third part, the heavenly voice. The Lord is going to call you one day to tell you that this is what I want from you. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, as you go back home, 
look into this aspect. Your earthly clothings will one day be heavenly clothings. Therefore your glory is awaited. And your friends whom you have, bad or good, they are going to disappear and your company in heaven will be angels and saints. And that is the reason why the Lord has called you for this mission. Therefore, Jesus is groaning. He is groaning for each and every one of us that we may become a better Catholic by the end of this night. Amen.